Well, South African scientists have discovered two new COVID-19 Omicron sub-variants. The World Health Organization is monitoring them and their mutations to understand their impact. Scientist Tulio de Oliveira warns if the variants lead to travel bans, he will no longer share his data. Now, you'll remember de Oliveira was one of a group of scientists who first shared their data on the Omicron variant. He joins us live now for this conversation. Prof, thank you so much for your time uh, this evening. Let's talk a little bit further about these sub-variants of Omicron. What do we know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening and good evening to all your viewers. Yeah. So, so we know, we know quite a lot about them. So, so the first thing they, they, they are Omicron, what it means. They, they are very similar. Uh, yeah. The, the original variant of Omicron, but now Omicron have five sub variants. Yeah. And what we know is that as these subvariants emerge, they are likely to be more transmissible. Yeah. So, for example, in addition to the main wave of Omicron that we had in South Africa, that was followed by another subvariant, mm -hmm. the BA2, which which dominated the infections in South Africa, didn't cause much hospitalization and death, but that's the one caused major havoc in China, in Hong Kong, in South Korea. Yeah. And what we have found, we have found another two ones that's called now BA4 and BA5. We know that the increase in prevalence in South Africa, they have been detected in 10 other countries. But at the moment for South Africa, we are still very safe because our hospitalizations and deaths are very low. Yeah. You're speaking here, Prof, about how some of these sub-variants are more transmissible, but could they potentially be more dangerous? Uh, yes and not. Yeah. So, 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 for example, the best example is the previous one, the BA2. Once, because when I say yes and not, if for South Africa, the answer is probably not. And the reason for that is because we have very high population immunity from previous infection and vaccination. And any and everywhere it spread. So, so we were absolutely right to say that travel bans is ineffective. Yeah? I, I think that's extremely unlikely that countries would put a travel ban against South Africa because they saw that one does not work, the virus will spread. Second, it is very uh, damaging to our economy. It's also damaging to the reputation. And in addition, we, they, they also risk that South Africa, that's one of the most advanced countries on, on COVID ID, uh, researching the world, stop, stop uh, giving information to the whole world. I personally, that's what I would do if they, after suffering a travel ban because the beta and uh, Omicron uh, countries impose uh, unfair, unscientific, and and uh, unfunctional travel ban in South Africa, then what we'll do as a network, we would stop uh, sharing in data with the world. Of course, we still would share with our Department of Health, the Department of Science Innovation, because what we find is that detecting variants early allow to prepare the health system, and in the end, it's, uh, it saved thousands of lives. Yeah. So we do know that these variants are there, BA4 and BA5 variants in the South African context. Winter is around the corner. Uh, Prof, we're experiencing quite a chilly, a very cold um, uh, autumn season leading into the winter season, wet conditions. Are we expecting that? We've been speaking about this fifth wave, fifth wave, fifth wave. We've seen these uh, latest COVID-19 numbers. Uh, we're still looking in, uh, you know, b below like a 20 percent mark, which was what we experienced last year around this time later on. What are we anticipating? What do we know from the science regarding this looming fifth wave in the country? Okay, so 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 what we the first thing is that we we really expect our population immunity, uh, especially through vaccination. And again, I, I would plead to everyone to get vaccinated or get the booster before before the winter because that's what's really going to protect uh, our country. And also to previous infection, we, we we really expect that even if we see a number of cases going up, we're going to see the same as we saw with the Omicron wave. What we call the coupling of infections, hospitalization, and that. So, so, so we really believe that the worst is behind us. But of course, that 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 as scientists and uh, as citizens, yeah, the best thing to to make the worst uh, behind us is really take care. It's especially in the next few weeks, take care with social gathering 
take still using masks indoor and increase vaccination so we can really get the worst behind us. Of course, that the winter also brings other, other infections. It brings other respiratory virus, such as, as, as the flu. It's also increased the, the rate of TB. And we know that naturally in the winter time in South Africa, we have an increase of the excess death. So more than ever, it, it, it's good to, to really take care and, and try to, to, to really preempt and to prepare, uh, prepare hospitals, healthcare workers, increase vaccination, and, and, and still taking some care. I really believe that the, the end of the light, uh, the lights in the end of the tunnel, we are mm -hmm. almost out of this pandemic. So more than ever, it's just going to be good to people to be quite responsible in the next few weeks so we can avoid a big wave of infections in we'll, the winter. We'll leave it there. Professor Tulio de Oliveira, always insightful conversation, Director of Series Centre for Epidemic Response and Innovation South Africa.